Well, hey guys, and welcome to Midweek with Matt and Kyle. Uh, tonight, we're going to trade one Pastor Matt for two awesome members of our ministry staff. Uh, tonight, I have with us Pastor Paula Cox, who's in charge of our cause and care ministry, and Pastor Jen Curtis, who leads our next gen ministry uh, from birth to 18. And so I take a minute, uh, guys, and say hi. Hey, guys. Good to be with you tonight. Hey, everybody. It's so good to see you and be with you this evening. Well, great. Hey, if you've never joined us for midweek, uh, the goal over the next 20 minutes or so is just to offer uh, a, a fun and casual place for us to connect as a church family, uh, to touch base outside of that Sunday morning uh, church environment. And so uh, you may have noticed we're a little lower on the tech this week than we have been in the past, uh, but that's okay. Uh, you know, we're all just doing our best to honor uh, the stay at home uh, guidance from Governor Hogan that came out uh, just yesterday. And so uh, you may have heard from Pastor Matt last night that uh, there's, there's a special allowance in the governor's release um, that, that applies to churches that does allow us to meet in limited numbers um, to, to continue to host online services. And so uh, the Sunday morning experience is going to continue to look uh, similarly to what it has for the last couple of weeks. Um, but, but all of our other connection points, we want to make sure that we do our best uh, to honor this, uh, this idea of staying at home to flatten the curve. And so uh, our hope over the next few minutes is to encourage you, uh, to lift your head, to inspire you. Uh, you know, it's, the world's kind of full of difficult news this week, and, and we absolutely are not pretending uh, that, that this crisis doesn't exist. Um, we're, we're about to head into some really difficult weeks ahead. Um, and, you know, as the news is telling us, tens of thousands of people uh, are expected uh, to lose their lives to, to this COVID-19 crisis. And so uh, rather than covering our eyes and our ears to, to what's going on in the world around us, uh, we want to kind of lean in uh, and, and kind of lean into this idea that um, God is still present with us, even in times where it looks like things are out of control. Uh, and so uh, while we recognize the, the seriousness and the significance of the events around us, uh, we also want to just have a time of encouragement uh, as we recognize and celebrate that God is able to bring beauty from ashes. Um, he's able to make all things work together for our good. And, and so um, Jesus said he would build his church, that the gates of hell wouldn't uh, prevail against it, and, and that uh, he has a, a hope and a plan uh, through the people of uh, his church. And so South Point Church is continuing to gather and to serve as the church. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. That's why I brought Jen and, and Paula on. Um, and, and we just hope that over the next few minutes, we can bring a little bit uh, of light and encouragement in this hard season. And so uh, all that to say, uh, again, we have Jen and Paula with us um, to tell us about what they're doing in their specific areas of ministry. Uh, they represent dozens of staff people and volunteers uh, on their teams who are actively um, serving and being a part of what's right in the world. And so uh, we're looking forward to hearing from them. Uh, but before we talk about what people are doing and, and what we're doing as a church, we really thought it would be great um, for us to just pause and remember uh, the why. Like, why, why do we do this? Why can we have this hope? And, and uh, what does God have to say about this in these difficult times? And so I'm going to pass the mic over to Paula, Pastor Paula, to uh, lead us through a time of, of uh, reflection. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, I just wanted to um, just share some things that I've been thinking about this week uh, as I've been home and alone, well, with my family, but, uh, you know, not in the you usual business, <laughs> right? <laughs> not in the Don't usual business <laughs> that we are used to having. <laughs> I love my family. Uh, yes, so we all love our families, but we all are seeking uh, to shelter in place in a quiet alone space sometimes just to be real. <laughs> anyway, um, I just uh, came across Mark 4 where it talks about Jesus calming the storm. And I want to read it to you real quickly. Uh, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up and high waves were breaking into the boat. It began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, 
He rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And then he asked them, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? So I just want to make some quick observations about that passage there. You know, Jesus was not surprised by the storm. Uh, he was in the boat and he was sleeping. I, I also understand about the Sea of Galilee where they were traveling, um, that that was a, a, a place that had frequent storms uh, that, that uh, sprung up quickly. And, um, you know, the disciples that were with him, some of them were fishermen. They were used to being uh, out in the storms uh, on the Sea of Galilee. Um, but even these storms seemed extra to them. And so I don't know about you, but uh, I'm feeling like we're maybe in an extra storm right now. Um, it's not just a storm that my family's personally going through or our community's going through. It's, it's a storm that the whole world is going through. And so, um, you know, it's just a good reminder that Jesus is not surprised by the storm. God is still in control and we can put our trust in him. The other um, thing that I was thinking was that you know, Jesus wasn't awakened by the storm. Um, you know, he was sleeping and he had been working um, to give care and to teach and to give miracles, um, perform miracles uh, before he uh, took this boat ride. And so he was sleeping, um, but the storm didn't wake him up. It was the cries of his disciples that woke him up. And so that gives me so much comfort as well that we can cry out uh, in our storm uh, and know that God will hear us, um, that Jesus is near, that he has not left us all alone. And so we, uh, you know, we can, we can think through that as we are traveling on the storm. It seems like we don't know when we're going to get to the other side, um, but, but God is in control and we will get to the other side. And then lastly, um, this was an opportunity for the disciples and for us as Christ followers to really take our, um, our faith temperature. You know, um, he, they had been with him and had seen his teaching, had seen him uh, performing these miracles. And still um, they, they, they doubted. They, they, he said, where is your faith? You know, why are you so afraid? Um, and so, uh, you know, if these disciples who walked with him and saw him actually doing this, um, had, uh, time for fear and doubt, uh, you know, it's, it's understandable that we would too, but, but it's okay because Jesus didn't leave them. He was still with them. They go on to continue, um, ministry, um, after they get off the boat on the other side. And, and so faith and doubt is something that we all wrestle with and it's okay. This is a storm is an opportunity for us to take our spiritual temperature on that and to see how and where we can grow. And so those were just a few of the things that I, I thought of as we were um, reading through this passage today that I wanted to share with you. Uh, Jesus is with us, even in the storm, even in an extra storm, he's with us and we can cry out to him and we can grow in our faith during this time. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much, uh, Paula. I appreciate uh, your insight there. Um, Paula represents our cause and care team, uh, which uh, is, is our inward and outward uh, care ministry, both inside the church and outside um, in our community and to the world around us. And so, uh, Paula, well, while we have you, I'd love to hear a little bit uh, about um, the initiatives that South Point is leading under your leadership and um, you know, what we can do in the, in the coming days, um, even as this kind of stay at home mandate um, is in place. Sure, yeah, I would love to talk about that. So um, what we've been doing is we've been trying to resource the um, communities and um, the uh, nonprofits that we are in partnership with. Uh, and we will continue to do that as long as we can. P uh, people have been so generous and faithful um, to uh, just be so giving. Uh, they've donated goods and um, monetarily, and so we're so thankful for that. Um, this presents a little bit of a challenge since, um, you know, we're, we're all supposed to stay at home, and so um, the operation of, of doing that is getting a little bit more challenging, but we are being uh, faithful in the way that we handle things um, by uh, making sure that we are preparing um, weekly groceries well uh, so that um, if they have come into contact with the virus, uh, we're wiping those down. We are um, engaging one person from each family one at a time uh, so that um, so that we can 
uh, flatten the curve, lessen this virus. Um, and so that's what we're continuing to do. Um, and I'm so thankful, um, you know, that right now in this time, so many people are giving and helping and, um, uh, it's just hard to be at home and not feel like there's something that we can do. So, uh, while I want to, to give you guys a, a big list of things to do from home, um, it's a little difficult. I do have a few ideas for you. Um, you know, just continuing to, um, just be joy out there on the internet, um, uh, spread good. goodness, um, make a funny video with your family, you know, anything like that. If you have time to write a letter to uh, someone at the veterans home, um, draw, have your kids draw a picture, uh, something creative, a creative outlet that you could um, send along with good wishes. Um, or to a retirement home here in the area uh, when so many people are feeling isolated and alone uh, that cheer goes a long way um, you could um, you know research uh, if you have a child through compassion international uh, or world vision um, or another entity you could research um, a way to um, or you could research kind of what's happening with them in their part of the world. Think about um, seeing how you could reach out to them. I know um, through my World Vision Child, we can email and they will get the information uh, and the letters to them. So that's an opportunity to kind of um, get our focus off of just what's happening here and, and see that bigger picture of what's happening. I know I've been keeping a close eye on um, what's happening with our partners in Guatemala and um, it's uh, pretty significant. And so um, uh, any ways that we can support them is, is very important. Um, it's funny because uh, most of the time when I talk about what we're doing in the community, I will talk about relationship first, relationship, relationship, relationship. And that's so important. Um, but at this time, when we can't really be with each other, um, at this time of relief, it's very appropriate, appropriate to give monetarily. And so if there are um, uh, uh, ministries that you support uh, that could use some extra funding at this time, uh, now is the time to give, to, to be open-handed and, and just to try to... Um, help out as much as you can when we've had very generous donations online as well. And we're so thankful because uh, when this, uh, when we come out on the other side of this, we're going to need to be able to support people monetarily. And so um, know that I don't say that lightly, that I'm not always um, saying give, give, give. I'm usually saying, Hey, let's be in relationship with people. Uh, but in this moment, in this instance, this is what we really need to do. And so um, just keep on um, doing the good that you've been doing, what you can do from in your home. Keep on spreading the joy and let's just continue to, um, to grow together through this. Awesome. So um, Paula, you, you referenced uh, people being generous uh, financially. And so um, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've got two places that you can do that. Uh, when we give online, uh, we have a COVID-19 relief fund that's mm -hmm. specifically for our community that we want to be actively involved in, um, in serving and giving relief in our local community. And so um, that's one fund. The other option is um, if you have a heart, if, if as Paula was talking about Guatemala and some of our international partners, um, if you would like to contribute financially to that, um, then, then there's a mission line under our giving fund as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so either of those two places will make sure that your donation uh, goes further and uh, partners with um, with you know what we're doing here at South Point Church. Is that yeah. accurate? That's great. Yeah. And I also want to say too, we are still accepting donations. So if you're at the grocery store and I know, I mean, I want to, um, you know, say this, don't make extra trips, but when, when you are going out for your essential items, if you are able to pick something uh, up, you're still able to drop off, um, those items at our office uh, between noon and five, we have um, a little foyer in our office. Uh, there's gonna be a box there. You can just drop those items in the box um, and then um, and then go on home uh, you know, to, to do your part. So we appreciate all of those um, donations as well. And those go a long way to help our families uh, that we're trying to serve at this time. Awesome, thanks Paula. Mm -hmm. 
Well, um, so Paula, I know you've got a couple uh, girls that are growing up and, and are growing up as kids at South Point Church, and um, I do as well. And I'm so grateful for the ministry of uh, our next gen team uh, for uh, both young kids starting at nursery age all the way through high school. And so um, uh, we have with us Pastor Jen Curtis, who leads that team and has a couple people um, under her as well. And um, just would just love to hear from you, Jen, about um, how, how are you doing youth ministry, student ministry, um, kid ministry in an age where we can't uh, leave our houses or shouldn't uh, leave to go do what we would typically do? Yeah. So um, parents, does anybody else feel like we are on the struggle bus? Um, I know that I do. Uh, Kyle hit me up earlier and was like, hey, I'm going to need you to be on this video tonight. And I was like, yeah, that's that's not really good. I'm going to have to take a shower and get dressed up and actually do my hair. And then I was like, wait a second. I already showered today and I put pants on. So winning. I'm pretty sure I'm winning today. <laughs> yep. That's a win for me and my family these days. Yep. Um, for those of you that might not know, I have um, four kids. I have a 19-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 12-year-old, and an 11-year-old. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to work from home with all of my kids here. My husband is working from home with all of our kids here. Um, and we just have no clue how we're going to get through this. And I just want to <laughs> tell you, if you're a parent right now and you do not know what tomorrow looks like, that's okay. You're not the only one. We are yeah. in this together. Uh, the thought of online schooling for my children is terrifying. We have one computer that is shared by my youngest three, and I'm pretty sure that I don't know that that computer knows how to run any programs outside of YouTube or Minecraft. So yeah, we're, we're trying to figure this out. Um, so I just want to encourage you. Are you a parent? Are you a grandparent? Are you a guardian? Are you a family member who's looking after other kids? Um, I just want you to know that we see you and we know that you are doing your best. Um, and what the best is looks different for all of us. Um, for me and my family, our best is our kids are total free ranging it right now. They are living their best life on video games and PlayStation and phones. And there's just not a lot I can do to stop that right now. Um, some of you, you're killing it. And you've got special rooms set up for your kids to do school in. Um, they have separate areas. And that's great. You're doing family time and Bible time every day. That's not my family. <laughs> like we are completely trying to figure this out moment by moment. I feel like I have gone through 3 million emails from 400 different teachers. There's not really that many, but I like to be dramatic. Um, and I know that I should know which teacher belongs with which child. But at this point, like I've got a high schooler, a middle schooler, an elementary schooler and a college age kid. And I just don't know. And so we're just doing our best to get through it. Um, so at South Point, we've tried to navigate ways um, to best equip you as parents and guardians to be the primary spiritual influence in your kid's life. And I'm pretty sure that that's a job that is also completely overwhelming for you right now. Um, so everything that we've looked at, we've looked through the lens of, does this cause parents to feel more anxiety? Um, are they overwhelmed by the content that we're giving them? So please, as we've pushed content to you and giving you information, if you find this overwhelming at all, just take a step back. It's okay. Take a deep breath. You don't have to do it all. Nobody expects you to do it all. If you are one of those parents who is like, oh, give me more, give me more. That's great. We've got more content. We just need you to let us know um, what you would like to see, what you would like to have. I'm kind of moving on to steps that we have done. Um, parent emails. If you are um, the parent or guardian of a child at South Point, you should be receiving emails from our Next Generation staff team. Um, if you have a preschooler, which is birth through five years old, you'll be getting emails from Bree Barber. Elementary school is going to come from Joe Cheseldine. Uh, that's kindergarten to fifth grade. Middle school will come from Jill Hamilton and high school from Kayla Smith. Um, if you're not receiving these emails, we find that a lot of them are going to junk mail, and that's okay. Just check it. Mark it not as junk, and that should hopefully solve that problem. If you still don't have the emails, shoot me an email at jcurtis at southpointforyou.com. Um, and I'll make sure that we get you added to that communication list um, so that you are getting content um, that your group needs. Um, Facebook has kind of become our primary um, communication tool for me meeting lots of people. Um, and we have several Facebook groups. And I know it can feel overwhelming. Um, but keep in mind, we're doing birth through high school. And so it's kind of a wide age range. And so I don't want everybody to get all the content because that would just make me 
lose my mind. Um, so we have our South Point Student Ministry page, which is for middle school and high school students. Um, we've created parent groups for elementary and preschool. Um, so we have um, South Point Kids Parent Group for kindergarten through third grade, South Point Preteen Parent Group for fourth and fifth graders, and we have a South Point Preschool Parent Group for birth through five years old. Um, and this is where we're uploading our video lessons and we're kind of adding activities and ways, ways to engage online. Um, one of the biggest things we're pushing is called the Parent Q app. Um, we have found this to be an invaluable tool. Um, and as a parent who is constantly going, I can't handle all the information being thrown at me and what I should be doing, um, this has been great. You just, it's a free app that you can download from the App Store. It's called Parent Q. Uh, you're going to log into South Point Church in Leonardtown, Maryland. And you can add all of your children in. And it just gives you um, a couple of ideas that you can do. But it also just gives you some conversation starters. Um, like you're going to have moments where you're alone with your kid. Could you ask them this question? And so it's a no pressure way um, to kind of connect with your kid and talk about um, kind of bring Jesus into your home. Um, for our middle schoolers, we have been doing um, youth group on Tuesday nights at six o'clock. We're bringing all the elements of a typical Sunday morning to these Tuesday nights. We're going to have worship, game, a large group message. And after the large group message, we're using um, Zoom to break out into uh, small groups where it's a smaller group of students with a leader um, who is trained and can kind of help them walk through what they might be feeling. Um, I've seen some students log on and after a few minutes, they jump out because trust me, when you stick 40 middle schoolers in an online platform who have been cooped up in their home, it's crazy and it's chaotic. And so if that feels like too much for your student, have them come in about 30 minutes late. Um, the chaos will have died down. We will have moved on to the large group portion. Um, and after that, we'll put them into small groups, which kind of gives them an opportunity to connect with other students um, age, who are the same age with them and kind of in the same geographic location. Um, we're doing the same thing for high schoolers on Sunday evenings. Um, once again, we have the same elements of our high school youth group. We've got a game, worship, large group, and small groups. Um, and again, if it feels like too much um, for your student, because it is chaotic in these rooms when you've got 30, 40, 50 kids, everybody's trying to talk over each other, we get it. Um, just have them come in a little bit later, and that's okay. Like, we have someone in the um, lobby at all times, and we can send them to small group rooms and kind of give them kind of an on-ramp into um, these settings. Um, if you are the parent of a middle schooler or a high schooler, um, we know that your students are struggling significantly with this. Their lives have been disrupted. And so especially on the high school end, we are making sure that all of our high school students are connected with one of our leaders who can check in with them one-on-one -on -one throughout the week um, and just kind of touch base. You know, is there any, anything we can pray for you for? Um, do you need any, do you need somebody to talk to? And so just kind of making that one-on-one -on -one connection outside of group messages. Uh, we've also have for our high school ministry, we have a group me chat, which has all of our high schoolers together and all of our leaders together. And it's just kind of idle chit chat throughout the day, um, fun things we're doing here and there just to keep people engaged with each other so that they don't forget that they're not alone through this. Um, as some of you parents may know, we were doing a study on dating, relationships, and sex with our middle and high schoolers. We've kind of decided that that's probably not the most relevant topic to be covering right now because, well, everybody's at home. Um, and so we kind of just dropped that where it was and we picked up um, some new series for our middle schoolers. It's called Big Picture. And for our high schoolers, it's called What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. Um, and we're just taking this opportunity to walk through the story of Joseph and kind of relate it to the students of there are times in your life when you just don't know what to do. Um, and so it's part of looking at realizing that you're part of a bigger picture. And so piecing all of that together for them. And that series will continue for the next three weeks um, for both middle school and high school. Um, and lastly, I just want to tell um, parents, guardians, anyone who is responsible for kids or students right now. Um, I, I know that you're struggling. I know that this is hard. And so I just want to say, if you're struggling or if your student is struggling, please don't hesitate. Um, to reach out, send me an email. Like we can set up a time to talk. We can use phone calls. We can use Zoom. We can take um, steps to kind of walk you through what your student might be feeling and what you might be feeling. And sometimes it's just good to know that there's someone who um, is there with you and is also facing these same struggles. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, there seems to be a lot of 
concern over using the Zoom app, which is what we've been using for our middle school and high school, about people coming in and sharing inappropriate content. Uh, we just want you to know we've taken all the precautions that we know to take. Uh, we've, you know, only the leaders can share the screen. Um, students cannot file share between themselves. And so while it's not a 100% safe guarantee, we are taking steps to make sure that this environment is as safe for your student as it can possibly be. Awesome, Jen. Well, thanks so much. Uh, I always appreciate your candor and honesty. And um, I just really have one question, and that is, what's your favorite Taylor Swift song? Because I see you're a big fan. Um, yeah, so I'm hanging out with my best friend, Taylor Swift. She doesn't know we're friends, so don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what my favorite Taylor Swift song is. <laughs> it's a hard pick, you know, it's it a big catalog. Yes. Well, great. Um, I, again, uh, this will be available for you to replay if you missed any of that information. Um, we're gonna have as much of that, uh, you know, links to different uh, groups and um, social media options and times and all that stuff that Jen walked through um, in the chat section. And so be sure to check that out. Um, and again, if you have any questions for Jen, you can reach out to her, um, jcurtis at southpointfree.com. And you know, at the end, um, I think there might've been a little bit of a break up there in the, um, the Wi-Fi, but you were saying that if anybody is, um, you know, has questions or needs help or is struggling, like it's okay and that you're available. And I just wanna give one plug real quick back to Paula. Um, I know that we have some resources available um, for uh, adults who, who might be feeling that way. You know, they might be going, yeah, I have a teenager that is feeling anxious, but what about me? Yes. Um, and so, <laughs> Uh, Paula, can you share a little bit about the options available for folks? Yes, thank you so much for that. Um, so right now, friends, we have Stephen Ministers available uh, to meet with you um, video, via video chat, whichever uh, way seems best. We can do Zoom or we can do iMessage or FaceTime. Uh, and so if you are struggling, please don't go through this time alone. Uh, if you feel like, oh, I, it's, I shouldn't reach out you're wrong, you absolutely should reach out. We have people that are willing to care for you one uh, hour, once a week, uh, for about the next eight weeks, just to get us through this rough storm. Um, and we are so excited to be able to do that. Um, I myself have had a Stephen minister before. I can personally speak uh, to the value that they brought in my life um, and to the ways that um, I was just able to to share uh, freely, knowing that everything was confidential and knowing that I had somebody that was just willing to pray for me and help me uh, through that difficult time. And so uh, if that sounds like something that would benefit you, please, please reach out. If you are in need in any other way, I also would ask that you would reach out to me at PCOX at southpointforyou.com. If you have a physical need um, that, that we can meet, we want to do that for you. And so please, please don't hesitate to reach out. We don't have to weather the storm by ourselves. Uh, we are uh, better together and we can, we can uh, help each other through. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, I want to say uh, thank you so much for spending part of your Wednesday night with us. Um, again, hopefully some of this uh, was, was helpful and encouraging. I um, really appreciate Paula's uh, guidance there um, about weathering the storm and that Jesus is with us um, again when things are difficult. And so uh, God is not far. He is he's nearby. And um, uh, if it's okay, let's just take a moment and pray uh, and recognize uh, our need for God. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for being a part of a church uh, where we can uh, hear about you and, and know uh, the truths of your scriptures, uh, that we can uh, discover a God who is with us and for us, uh, that is not absent when things look chaotic, uh, and then also to be a part of a church that is leaning into the tension of this season um, and that wants to serve and support uh, families that uh, that are walking through this together. And just to be a place where we can be honest and go, even us as staff people, as pastors and, and ministry folks, um, we are in the same struggle with you. And so um, we collectively lift our eyes to our Heavenly Father. And um, we look to you, God, we trust you. We thank you so much in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys, well, 
We'll see you next time. Uh, be sure to invite a friend to church this Sunday. We'll be back at the same time, same place, southpointview.com slash live at 9 and 11 a.m. Can't wait to see you there. Take care.